a breakdown of what happened in this historic arraignment of defendant Donald Trump yesterday. You know, for all the talk about how New York rules bar video cameras, which was discussed, let's be clear, that rule only delays how we hear what happens, and we don't see it on video. So we don't hear it in real time. And from a news and information perspective, that's the most important thing. A live video feed would mean we'd all watch it together. But let's be clear. In essence, we still, with a delay, learn what happens. We get the transcript. So now tonight, we have the full transcript, and I want to share with you some of what we've learned. And I can tell you, honestly, yesterday, this wasn't covered. There was a lot of other more important big things happening. So we're going to cover for you right now. First, the way it began. A noticeably subdued Trump was seated for the first time in the criminal defendant's seat, flanked by lawyers and cops who were there to keep order, not to just protect him as a former government official. And Trump was compelled to speak only when instructed and asked to respond to questions. You've probably seen, whether you wanted to or not, Donald Trump in many forums, including around other candidates and moderators and interviewers and even in government proceedings and press conferences. And, well, you've never seen him like this because he could not speak when he wanted under the rules. He could only speak in response. And he spoke more than once. The judge first prompted Trump on the plea, and we heard about that. But there were several other times that Trump was compelled to speak during his arraignment. I'm going to show you some of them. The plea, of course, was widely reported. The judge asking, how do you plead to this indictment? Defendant Mr. Trump, which is how he's identified in these transcripts, says, not guilty. Trump participating, bound by the rule of law, and entering the plea. The judge also was quick to—and I'll explain why, and this was unusual—quick to admonish Defendant Trump over the recent threats he's made. And that is a response to and really a validation of a decision that the DA's team made, because, as you may have heard us mention, the vast majority of arraignments are quick. We had legal experts on talking about how this could be a five, ten-minute thing. But the DA's team made an unusual, aggressive choice to not waste any time and to risk people saying, oh, why was this arraignment different for this defendant? And they would say, not because of any reason about the courts or bias, but because the defendant already had acted in a way that most defendants, even those accused of violent crimes, don't act, by attacking the system and threatening court officials. So they used the arraignment, we now know, to take time and put heat on Trump over the violent messages. They actually spent a considerable amount of time doing that, and it worked. And let me show you this. The judge then told Trump's team about how this violent set of messages would not be acceptable. Quote, the court, that's a reference to the judge, please refrain from making comments or engaging in conduct that has the potential to incite violence, create civil unrest, or jeopardize the safety or well-being of any individuals. The court, the judge continued, do not engage in words or conduct which jeopardize the rule of law, particularly as it applies to these proceedings in this courtroom. Now, that is the judge using the arraignment to put defendant Trump on notice, on record, laying down a marker for more severe action if he goes further. Now, if you're watching this thinking, well, you've been acquainted with Donald Trump and how he talks and what he does for a long time. That may be, but this is not a public debate. This is not rhetoric or politics. As far as the New York court system is concerned, this transcript I'm reading from you tonight, for you tonight, which is new, which comes from, of course, yesterday's arraignment, is the first time Donald Trump has appeared as a criminal defendant in the New York court system. So this actually, in fairness, is his first official warning. And the judge was direct on that point. Clarify again, in this official transcript, on the record, we all know it now, that the judge would consider more extreme measures next time. Quote, if I were to be handed something like this again in the future, I would take a closer look at it. And the judge, in this transcript, instructs Trump's lawyers and defendant Trump that while this was thus instructions—I just read them to you—don't do this, don't undermine the rule of law, don't threaten violence. That's an instruction, meaning legally, that's just a kind of a statement of, you know, please don't. It's not an order. But there could be orders. It could be gag orders. You can even hold someone in contempt. Contempt is fast because it means you get taken to the jail that same day. Now, Trump and his lawyers, well, they're saying they got the message. I have a little more on that for you tonight. I also want to show you how the judge addressed the defendant's rights and obligations. And this is, again, why Trump is defended—is is a defendant. 
He's not identified as a former president or referenced for his government experience. He is simply defendant Trump. Like any other accused system in this court, you see him identified that way as when he pled not guilty. So the judge then goes on to say later in the same arraignment, Mr. Trump, as you know, you have a right to conflict-free representation. Do you understand that right, Mr. Trump? Defendant Mr. Trump says, yes. And this refers to a lawyer you may have heard of, Joe Takapina, because the judge is talking about reports, including a new letter that was used at the arraignment yesterday that, again, got a little less news than the other bigger deal of Donald Trump being arrested, but a new letter that discusses his alleged contact with Stormy Daniels in 2018 about possibly representing her. Quote, you are certainly welcome to consult with other counsel. Run this issue by them and see how you feel about it when it's over, OK? This is the court looking out for whether defendant Trump, Donald Trump, um, has a conflict here on one of his lawyers on his team. And Trump responds, OK, thank you. Now, all of this is new from the transcript. And thank you is a long ways from how Trump talks about the judge and the court process in public, which reinforces how he is operating under the rules and the pressures of being a criminal defendant. This is all new to him. Now, the judge continues, if at some point down the road you're not present, I have the right to continue proceedings in your absence. Do you understand that? Defendant Mr. Trump replies, yes. And while the judge made clear he was providing standard instructions not caused by this defendant in this section, he also told defendant Trump that if he were to become disruptive, I do have the authority to remove you from the courtroom and continue in your absence. Do you understand that? Defendant Mr. Trump replies, I do. And the judge, making it crystal clear in case this ever comes up later and we hear talk about bias or selective prosecution or unfair rules, the judge is saying it right here. We have it in this new transcript. Quote, if either one of those situations were to happen and the case were to go to trial, we would go to trial without you. That means without Trump present in the room, while he still, of course, could be sent to jail for that outcome if he lost. Do you understand, defendant Mr. Trump replies, quote, yes. So all of this happened yesterday. And again, it is standard that the video cameras were not on. Most states have them. New York doesn't. So it's standard New York procedure for the defendant. But again and again, you saw a huge widening gap between the role Trump is playing in public and what he's assuring his supporters and all the rest to the, as required, cooperative and obedient defendant in court where the judge is in control. This is the most that Donald Trump has ever faced in this scenario. The next hearing date is set for December 4th. Now, at most arraignments, I can tell you, that would be that. You go through it. This one was longer than usual. But then, OK, we got through that stuff. Here's the next hearing, and you're going to be there. Why are you going to be there? Well, if you blow off an arraignment in New York, the judge issues a bench warrant. And that means the NYPD come and get you. And unless you are terribly misinformed or have all kinds of other personal problems, most people don't want to bring on more heat and an NYPD arrest when they're already a criminal defendant, even habitual repeat players in the court systems. But something else happened yesterday. And if you haven't heard about it, I'm going to report it for you right now, because sometimes the news takes a minute to get it gathered up and fact-checked and reported out. Donald Trump's lawyers, right near the end of this thing, tried to get him some special treatment. They tried to cite the fact that he's former president, but not say that he should be given special treatment just because he's president, but because, rather, they argued it's created some unavoidable challenges for the city of New York. They argued the hassle, the cost of securing the area, mean it would really be better for everyone to allow him to just skip the next hearing, to not have to live through what I just showed you, the amount of time where he's not in control and whether he thinks it's fair or not or an indignity or not, where he just says, yes, sir, no, sir, thank you, sir. They wanted to exempt him from that. Now, mind you, their idea was the lawyers would still be there to fight for him, but he wouldn't have to be there at the next hearing. Now, this is a logis like a logistical item. It's not going to impact the resolution of the trial. But Trump's lawyers, I can report for you tonight, lost on that yesterday. Because of the new transcript, I can tell you the judge just swiftly rejects the entire Trump request. Quote, I expect all other defendants to appear in court, even high-profile defendants, I think, in the interest of transparency and ensuring the rule of law even-handedly, I'm going to deny your application. 
end quote. Denied. It's that quick. Now, a judge can take more time on larger questions, of course. This was another way that Trump learned that he is in a different arena. This isn't a congressional subpoena or a civil case where he can just drag out every step for months or more. So while this was, I am emphasizing, a kind of a procedural point, it doesn't tell you whether he's guilty or not, but Trump's lawyers asked, and the judge rejected them and said no, and that's the end of that. He must show up at the next hearing, or if he didn't, he would be, again, facing that potential bench warrant and arrest to be brought there. This all happened yesterday. This is how Trump obeyed and accepted the judge's rulings in the afternoon, with little choice. Then at night, he went out and gave one of his speeches, which we're not airing all of it, although we will air his legal defenses, and we've had his lawyers on here, but we're not going to air just an endless set of rambling attacks. And in that speech, he tried to play tough again. But Trump's lawyers, with an open case against him, are trying to toe a different line. They're trying to emphasize Trump heard the judge, and they're trying to keep him in line. Did you tell your client, did you do what the judge asked you to do and advise him to knock it off? President Trump heard the judge. President Trump heard the judge. And in court, President, Ju President Trump said yes to the judge and thank you to the judge. And he watched as his vaunted lawyers, that one among others, didn't really get as far as you can get with these games in civil court or with Congress or with the Supreme Court appeals or while you're the sitting president. And there are reasons why there are different standards. This is a new experience for him. Yesterday was the first time he watched, as his lawyers couldn't even buy him, an hour on a question. Just no. And just, you have to be here next time. And just, that's how it's going to be. This is the first full day of Donald Trump's life as defendant Donald Trump. And he will be learning as he goes.